So we're just going to do kind of a quick overview of Chapter 17. And these are the slides straight from the publisher, so my apologies. Uh, nuclear chemistry, um, I think the general public kind of has a fear of nuclear or anything. Um, and it can be really, really dangerous, and yet it's also really, really useful. Um, nuclear medicine, uh, I think, has saved many, many lives. So we can use radioactivity to get clear images of your internal organs without harming you, without cutting you open, figure out what's going on inside so that we can, you know, do something about that. Um, so this is a, an illustration of um, diagnosing appendicitis. So they can give you some antibodies that have radioactive tags on them. And if you've got an, effect, an infection in your appendix, your appendix collects stuff. And so the antibodies will accumulate there and then they can, um, using a, this fancy machine, what is that? I don't even know. I'm, I'm not a doctor. Um, but they can take a picture of you and see the radioactivity and see it clustered up in your appendix. And that is a really clear indication that you've got an infection in your appendix. If you don't, then it won't accumulate there. So, you know, if, you're, if your appendix is not infected, you really don't want to have surgery and have them cut it out just because your stomach is hurting. That will make your stomach hurt more. What is radioactivity? Radioactivity is the emission of tiny energetic particles by the nuclei of certain unstable atoms. So most atoms are stable. They just stay the same all the time. But there are some that just fall apart all by themselves. So the nucleus which is where the nuclear comes from in nuclear chemistry, the nucleus will just kind of randomly spit out some particles. So in this illustration, we've got an atom here, and the nucleus is going to emit a particle. There's a couple different kinds of particles that can come out, and this is called radioactivity. See, why would you want that many words on a PowerPoint slide? It seems to me like they just copied and pasted the textbook and put it on the slides. And I'm supposed to read it to you or what? I don't know. So the discovery. Um, so this is kind of history. And it's kind of cool. Is back in 1896, um, Becquerel discovered radioactivity. Um, yeah, you can read that. It's interesting. That's interesting, too. Marie Curie. You've probably heard of her. Madame Curie. So she was a pioneer in more than one way. She was one of the first women in France to attempt um, doctoral work, a PhD, graduate work in chemistry. And so she was studying the emissions of uranium. And she discovered two new elements and one of them she named Polonium, which was named for Poland, which was her home country. So she was looking at radium to see if any, I mean, uranium to see if anything else, any other types of rays that they didn't know about before. Um, and the other element was radium, um, because it was really radioactive. It, it, it was so radioactive it glowed in the dark. Okay, most radioactive things do not actually glow in the dark. You know, you get movies and urban myths and stuff going on. It's glowing in the dark. But radium does glow in the dark. Um, they used to put radium in paint. And the glow-in-the-dark watches, you know, that you could see back in the day, um, they had uranium in them. And now we realize, you know, maybe that wasn't such a great idea. It glowed in the dark really well, though. She got the Nobel Prize um, for ph in physics. Um, she shared that with Becquerel and her husband, Pierre. And then um, a, few, a few years later, she got another Nobel Prize. She's a pretty impressive lady. They named Element 96 in honor of her, Curium. Um, and there's a picture of her and her two daughters.
there's a lot of history here. The history's cool, but... And by the way, you know, these people didn't realize that radioactivity could harm you. And so they, you know, because they, they were just figuring all this stuff out. And so their life expectancy was significantly shortened, sadly enough. So let's skip some of that history. And there's types of radiation. Um, the, I think the most important thing in this slide is that there's um, alpha rays, uh, beta rays, gamma rays, and positrons. And these are named for the Greek letters A, B, and C, uh, the first three letters. Alpha, so we would use the Greek letter alpha, beta, and this is gamma, which is kind of like a funny V or a sideways infinity sign. So do you remember when we did isotope notation, nuclear symbols, and we had the chemical symbol and then over on the left, we had two numbers. And on the top was the mass number, and on the bottom was the atomic number, which is the number of protons in the nucleus. And the mass number was the number of particles with mass, the protons and the neutrons. We can also use that notation to represent the three main subatomic particles. We only talk about protons, neutrons, and electrons in general chemistry, but actually there's a whole bunch of other ones. There's muons and pluons and all kinds of funny things. So a proton, oops, wrong place. Keep doing it. A proton, so we use the symbol P for proton, isn't that nice? N for neutron, E for electron, first letter at their names. So a proton has one proton. Catchy, huh? So one proton, and so its mass is going to be one because it doesn't have any neutrons. The neutron is going to have a mass number of zero because it doesn't have any protons. It's just a neutron, but its mass number is one. And an electron, this one's a little hard. The electron has a mass number of zero and um, an atomic number of negative one. How can it have minus one protons. Well, I think we'll explain that later. So alpha radiation occurs when you have an unstable nucleus that shoots out an alpha particle. What's an alpha particle? An alpha particle is actually a helium nucleus. So this is the symbol for the alpha particle. So it's a helium nucleus. It's got four, a mass number of four, because it's got two protons and two neutrons. So we've got this larger nucleus, and it's unstable. We don't go into why in this class. And it shoots out this particle. And now what's left has two fewer protons and two fewer neutrons. It's alpha decay. So we can write equations for these processes. So this is the equation for the nuclear decay of uranium-238. Remember, uranium-238, this is going to be the mass number. This is an isotope of uranium. Isotopes differ in the number of neutrons. They all have the same number of protons. If you look on the periodic table, uranium is element 92. So it has 92 protons, and its mass number is 238. When it undergoes alpha decay, it spits out an alpha particle. An alpha particle is a helium nucleus. Mass number of four atomic number of two. So where did these two protons come from? They came from the nucleus of this atom. So what's left after it loses two protons? Well, 92 minus two is 90. So now we have something with an um, atomic number of 90. And the mass number, 238, we're taking away a mass of four, so we get 234 left. And then where do we get this TH? Well, this is a different element. This is element number 90, the element with 90 protons. So we look on the periodic table, and it's thorium, TH. So in nuclear chemistry, you can have one element changing into another element. So we're, we're looking at the nucleus 
And so we don't, we don't mess around with charges. This should really have a two plus charge on it because it doesn't have any electrons. But we're not going to look at that because we're only looking at what happens in the nucleus. Any questions? So we use the word nuclide to mean a specific isotope. So the atom that you started with, the, the one that was unstable, is called the parent nuclide. And that comes apart and produces daughter nuclides. So the daughters come out of the parent. Kind of makes sense, but don't take the analogy too far. So this one down here is kind of important. In chemical reactions, we talked about how if you start with three hydrogen atoms, you end up with three hydrogen atoms. And all that happens is that you rearrange the atoms, and the atoms themselves don't change. In nuclear reactions, the atoms do change. So remember, I talked about Lego blocks a lot with chemical reactions. So Lego blocks. You take the bricks apart, you build something else, but you have the same number of bricks and the same kind of bricks because they're pretty hard to break with your hands. You can't make them into other things. In nuclear chemistry, now you have this little shop and you've got hacksaws and you've got melting things and you could melt those bricks down and form different bricks and you can change what the bricks are. So that's a real big difference between regular chemistry, chemical reactions and nuclear reactions. But nuclear reactions have to be balanced because the number of particles is going to remain the same. So the protons and the electrons and the neutrons are going to um, come apart from each other, perhaps, but they're not going away. And so our equations have to be balanced. In this, balance, in this equation here, we see that the mass numbers on one side add up and equal the mass numbers of the other side. So we've got 238 on this side and 238 on that side. And the atomic numbers have to be equal as well. So we've got 92 over here and 90 plus 2 over there. Kind of already went over that. So we can deduce or figure out what the daughter nuclide is if we know what type of decay and what the parent is. So here in this example, the parent is thorium-232. And it's undergoing alpha decay, which means that an alpha particle comes out. So then we can look at this missing piece here and figure out what it is. Over here, the total of the mass is 232. And so over here, it must be 232. So what plus 4 equals 232? Well, it must be 228. 228 plus 4 is 232. The atomic number over here is 90, and so over here it has to add up to 90. So this must be 88. 88 plus 2 is 90. And then we can figure out what the element symbol is by looking at the periodic table. And element number 88 is radium. So the missing piece here um, and there is radium with a mass number of 228 and an atomic number of 88. Yeah, so it goes through and kind of finishes it off there. Any questions?